All right, hope everyone's doing wonderful today. Today, what I got in stores, I wanna share and check out this casual Magic the Gathering deck that I made. Uh, I love tribal decks in the card game Magic the Gathering. If you're unfamiliar with that, tribal just means it's taking a specific creature type and making a deck based around that. So there's like zombies, goblins, wizards, uh, birds, squirrels. There's so many creature types in the card game Magic the Gathering. Uh, this is gonna be a rat tribal deck very casual deck uh doesn't really fit to any format that i'm aware of it's just kind of got a mixed mess of cards throughout the eras just made it to, uh and i just want to share it and check it out with you all anyways this is just a 60 card deck uh, i think it'd be a lot of fun to play and uh if you guys have any suggestions of to way to improve it or anything like that i'd love to hear about it uh anyways this is a 60 card deck over here i have 22 lands in this deck um 22 lands is cutting it a little close. Sometimes you want to have a little bit more than that, but I just stuck around 22 because a lot of the cards in this deck, since they are rats, they do have to, they do tend to have a lower casting cost. So I was okay with actually just having 22 lands in this deck. Um, I have three copies of Baron Moor, just a, a basic cycling land. It comes into play tapped. I wish it didn't, but it adds black to your mana pool, or you can cycle it for one black mana. And since there's, this is going to be a mono black deck, I don't have to worry about the cycling cost or anything like that. But cycling is pretty much um, you discard this card from your hand, draw a card. So if this is in your hand, you don't have any cards that you can play next turn or something like that, go ahead, cycle it, get an extra card, draw an extra chance. So I have three of these in this deck. That'll just be fun little inclusion. I have three Memorial to Folly. Uh, just a nice little card to get a creature back from your graveyard. Enters the battlefield tapped. It adds black to your mana pool, which is cool. It doesn't add colors. adds black. and has two black tap Sacrifice Memorial to Folly. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So if one of your rats perished in battle or something like that and really want to have it out, go ahead, get rid of this land, pay three mana, and then you can bring it back to your hand. So this would just be cool. Maybe it laid on in the game or something like that. Just some, uh, bring it back from your graveyard. So I have three of those in here. And the rest, I just have 16... Um, just basic swamps, beautiful basic swamps, very cool. So just 22 lands in total. And let's get on to the sort of spells and stuff like that, then the creatures are behind it. Uh, first off the bat, uh, when I think of rats, I, for whatever reason, I think of ravenous rats and what that card does when it comes into the battlefield, it makes your opponent discard a card. So I immediately uh, think of rats and discard. So usually my rats come with a lot of cards and spells that make your opponent discard. So. Right off the bat, we have Duress. I have three copies of these. Obviously, Thought Seize or something like that would be better. That's just a very expensive card. And this is still pretty good for it. It's one black mana. It's a sorcery. Just Let's check out what this card says. Uh, very creepy looking art. She's got a bunch of spikes coming right up to her face. But let's read what it does. It says, Target opponent reveals uh, their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards that card. So, you play Duress, you play it on turn one. It's a sorcery speed, so keep that in mind. They reveal their hand. You choose any card from their hand, as long as it's a non-creature or non-land. So, we can choose a Planeswalker, an Instant Sorcery, Enchantment, Artifact, whatever you want, as long as it's a non-creature and non-land card. You can make them discard. So, really powerful stuff right there. You can make them discard a Planeswalker right there in turn one. So, I have Duress. I have uh, three copies of Wrench Mind. Creepy looking art. Um, looks like his head just got hit by some like metal ball or something just breaking his neck super brutal by pete ventures anyways this is a two black cost sorcery target player discards two cards from his or her hand unless he or she discards an artic artifact card from his or her hand so powerful card right here two mana makes him discard two cards from their hand if they if they want to just discard one card, they have to discard an artifact. So no matter what, they're discarding something. Uh, and sometimes you almost want them to discard an artifact because artifacts are going to be powerful in this game. So they either have a choice to discard two cards or an artifact. And it's really cool. Just two mana to make them discard two cards or an artifact. Doesn't get much better than that. Really great card right there. Next one I have, I have two. Two Mind Rot. Just a classic discard spell. Different art. Really like this from old uh, Portal sets. Mind Rot, two and a black. Your opponent chooses and discards two cards from his or her hand. Three mana, sorcery speed, makes him discard two cards. Um, this is two mana, two black mana, makes him discard two cards or an artifact. So very similar, so that's why I included three wrench mine instead of three mind drop. But still really great to help them just kind of empty out their hand. So these first spells right here, all to just get your opponent to empty their hand out. Next I just have some removal spells. Uh, I have three tragic slips. This is one of my favorite removal spells. It's just so cool. It, it deals uh, negative, negative 
negative 13, negative 13. So it doesn't really deal damage. It doesn't say destroy. So it can kill indestructible creatures, which is really cool because it reduces their toughness down to zero as long as their toughness isn't above 13, which is pretty much most of the creatures in the game unless they have a bunch of counters or something like that. Anyways, it's an instant speed. Tragic slip for one black mana. And what this card does, it says tra uh, target creature gets negative one, negative one till end of turn. That's not that good, but the Morbid is where it comes into play. Target creature gets negative 13, negative 13 until end of turn instead if a creature died this turn. So that even that means if your opponent's creature died or your creature died, you can have this do negative 13, negative 13 for one black mana at instant speed. So something you could do, you can block with a rat token, have that rat token die to their giant creature, then play this instant speed, and then kill their creature. So just really cool. Uh, great removal right here. Great removal. Always, uh, always one for that card. Next one I got, I got three, uh, Ruinous Path. I was thinking about in putting Murder in this deck, but then I was thinking uh, Planeswalkers would be prompt too, and I just had these on hand. Ruinous Path, one and two blacks is Sorcery Speed. It'd be cool if it was Instant Speed, but uh, it's not. I guess I could put like Heroes Downfall or something like that, but I just had these ones off hand. Uh, destroy Target Creature or Planeswalker. Uh, yeah, that's just very simple. Sorcery speed, destroy target creature, planeswalker. And if you play for, uh, it's awaken four for, for seven mana, five and two black. Um, put four, one, one counters on a land, and that land becomes an elemental creature token with haste. So, end game, if you need a creature on the board or something like that, you can also use this awaken. But most of the time, you're just going to be using it for removal, either for creatures or planeswalker. So, I included three of those in here. Very cool. Next ones, these are kind of just, uh, fun cards right here. I just threw in these two sort of vengeance. I was just going through a bunch of my artifacts and equipments, and I thought this would be really cool. How would your opponent like it if there was a giant rat swinging at them with a sword across the board? I just thought it'd be a lot of fun to include this in here. It's just three mana, just fun cards, artifact equipment, and it gives equip creature plus two plus zero. It has first strike, vigilance, trample, and haste. So a lot of keyword abilities gives a little bit more power, and its equip cost is three. So if you have six free mana, you can slap it on your creature right off the bat, and uh, gives them haste, first strike, vigilance, and trample. That's some pretty powerful words right there. Very cool. Like the purple banner in the background. Absolutely fun. So I just included these in here because I thought it'd be fun to have some artifacts that your rats can use to attack with. Uh, now we're on to the creatures. Obviously, uh, this is such a good card right here, Typhoid Rats. Uh, this one's actually foil from Innistrad. Uh, it's just one black man. It's a creature rat. It's a 1-1, one, one, but it has death touch. That's a pretty big deal. You can use it to block a creature. If that blocking creature, um, it would just kill that blocking creature as long as it's not indestructible. And if you attack, it makes them not want to block it. So these are just really great to have on the board, even just to keep your defense up or something like that. So obviously, play set of typhoid rats. Doesn't get much better than that. Next one I have, I have three ravenous rats this card is one of the rats i always think of and like i said when it comes into play target opponent discards a card from his or her hand so this card makes you think uh, my deck just needs to have a lot of discard spells ravenous rats one in a black mana it's a one one creature when it comes in the battlefield it makes your opponent discard a card and you also have a body to attack or block with so pretty cool and since it is a rat it will help with some of the other cards in this deck because it is a rat tribal deck and keep in mind all of these cards are rats and if they're not i'll let you know and the next, I have a, uh, not place it, I have three Burglar Rats. This is a really good card as well. Uh, this is from one of the newer sets. I can't remember the name of it. It's pretty much the same thing as Ravenous Rats, except uh, it has a little bit different flavor, or not flavor text, different ability text. Uh, when Burglar Rat enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. So this card might be actually a little bit better than, um than ravenous rats because it's not actually targeting your opponents and if you're playing with multiple people it makes everyone that's your opponent discard a card so that's pretty cool burglar rats is a really great card right here um because if your player opponent has like hexproof or something you can't target them but if you played burglar rats it's not actually targeting them so this could be just overall better but honestly ravenous rats has a close place in my heart so i just keep it in there as well so i got three of these ones as well the next one is another newer card this one actually is not a rat, but it goes hand-in-hand hand with them. This is Piper of the Swarm. Um, these are foil ones. I just put three in here. I thought three would be enough. It's a low-cost creature. It's a one in a black. It's a creature, human, warlock. It's such a flavorful card right here. It makes me think of the fairy tale with uh, the Piper where he plays his pipe and makes all the rats come. Got an evil look in his face right there. It's a 1-3 creature for one in a black, so turn two you can put it out there. It has rats you control have menace. Very powerful. It means your rats can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. So my burglar rats, my typhoid rats, whatever you want, can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. It has one black tap, create a one one black rat creature token. So this thing can pump out rats, just make a bunch of rat tokens. And this one's pretty powerful right here. 
2 and 2 black. Tap, sacrifice 3 rats, gain control of target creature. I uh, love that. You pretty much, he can s make his rats, send them out, have his rats go grab a creature, and bring it back. Um, so pretty much take control of one of your opponent's creatures. If you have 3 rats on the battlefield and 4 free mana, very cool stuff right there. And since so this is going to be a rat deck, you're going to have lots of rats being able to be used. And he can even make the tokens himself. So this is just pretty cool inclusion in here. Such a cool card. Really like the flavor of it. Uh, awesome, awesome new addition to the rat deck. The next one I have, I have two of these, Swarm of Rat. One of these is actually, I think, French or Italian version from the Salvat or Hachete set. I've made a video on that. It has a Pegasus symbol for uh, for the set symbol right there. Very interesting stuff right there. If you're interested, check out the video. Uh, this one is Swarm of Rat. It's just a really great card that uses the power of the other rats to kind of fight and get stronger. One in a black, it's a star one creature. Swarm of rats power is equal to the number of rats you control. If you got five rats on the battlefield, this thing's a five one. Very cool, very cool right there. I wish that the toughness went up with the amount of rats. It's always gonna have one toughness unless you boost it up some other way, but still cool. I include two of these in here. Very cool right there, some white border cards. Next one I got, I got myself a pack rat. Another card that just builds up with the amount of rats. I wish I had two, two of these, but I only had one. Uh, pack rat, one in a black. They're just hanging out there. Interesting to see that the rats have green eyes. Most of the time they have some red beady eyes going on. Uh, pack rats, power and toughness are equal to the number of rats you control. As you can see, it's star star. So you got five rats on the battlefield. This thing's a five five and it's only two mana. If I had more of these, I'd probably put them in place of the swarm of rats because I think it's just overall better. And also, um, two and a black, discard a card, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of pack rat. So this thing can even make tokens of itself. You have five of these on the battlefield, you play this, then you make another pack rat. Now all your cre now pack rat and the token are six six because it added to the rats on the battlefield and it gives itself more power and toughness. So this thing can just be really a big nuisance if you get it on the board. Maybe including another one of these in deck would be a smart idea. Next one I got, I got two Pestilence Rats, all the way from Ice Age. Interesting art by Jeff A. Mangus, very cool. Just hanging out in the sewers, they flies or something like that, I don't know. Two in a black, Summon Rats. Pestilence Rats has power equal to the total number of other rats in play, no matter who controls them. For example, as long as there are two other rats in play, Pestilence Rats has power and toughness 2-3. So this is a pretty cool card. It's kind of similar to Pack Rats and Swarm of Rats. It uses the other rats in the battlefield to gain strength from it or power from it. Um, even if your opponent has a rat on the battlefield, it counts towards Pestilence Rats, uh, where the other ones is only the number of rats you control. This one can be even affected if your opponent has rats, so that's kind of cool as well. And I do like how the toughness on this is 3 mana, as opposed to Swarm of Rats toughness, which is only um, not three, pow 3 toughness, as opposed to the 1 toughness right there. So it has a little bit more body on it, so I kind of like that if you want to block with it. Most likely, if you're going to be blocking with Swarm of Rat, it's going to just instantly die. Uh, so that's a card you pretty much want to attack with. This one has a little bit more body, and can just be pumped up in the battlefield once you just put all of your rats out there. The next card I got, this one actually isn't a rat, but it is an ogre, an ogre rogue. Just a really cool card. It'd be cool if I had one more copy of this, but um, maybe just one is enough. Three and two black. It's a 3-3 three, three creature, so five mana for a 3-3, three, three, but where it counts is the uh, abilities. Whenever another non-token creature dies, you may put a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token onto the battlefield. Very cool right there, especially if you use uh, that in conjunction with a card like uh, Piper of the Swarm, and you're sacrificing three rats that are not tokens. So you just immediately get to put three token of rats onto the battlefield. Very cool. And also, rats you control have death touch. That is super right there. Even uh, just giving all your rats death touch is just a board that if they touch anything just kills those creatures So super powerful right there uh, great for a rat tribal deck Maybe one more copy would be very beneficial to this deck But very cool It's just a 3-3 creature that can make rat tokens if you if uh, one of your non-token creature dies and gives your rats death touch Really can't get much better than that awesome card right there Next one I have I have two copies of Maronar uh, powerful stuff. It is a more expensive card. It's five mana, similar to Ogler uh, Slumlord. It is a two-three creature, but where it counts is really the abilities. And by the way, the art on this is fantastic. It's like a shinobi sort of samurai, and you can see in the background he's got his uh, brethren of rats ready to fight for him. Crazy. And man, he makes an army of rats for sure. It's a two-three creature. All rats have fear, it means they can't be blocked except by uh, black creatures or artifact creatures. Fear is an old ability. Um, yep, uh, fear means can't be blocked except by black creatures or artifact creatures. And has tap, sacrifice a rat, put X11 black rat creature tokens into play where X is the number of rats you control. 
super powerful. Pretty much doubles the populations of rats that you have. And if you use this in conjunction with Ogre Slumlord and also um, like Piper of the Swarm or something like that, um, if you sacrifice a non-token rat, you sacrifice it and medium like another token, and then it just uh, you just keeps building up and building up. So you say you have ten uh, rats on the battlefield. You use this ability. And you also have like Ogre Slumlord on the battlefield. You sacrifice a non-token rat. So it immediately create a rat token. Bring your total up to 10 rats again. And then you just make 10 rat tokens. So that's just super powerful right there. Pretty much double the population of your rats. Giving all your rats fear. All your rats have death touch. And with Piper the Swarm you can give them all the menace. So it's just going to be a very obnoxious board. That they're not going to be able to deal with. Especially when you get this on the battlefield. It's just game starts getting pretty crazy. And the last card that I have is Ink Eyes Servant of Oni. Very similar uh, art style to this back when the Kamigawa era. Very ninja kind of samurai feel. Four and two black. Super expensive casting cost. Six mana. This is from one of those like uh, from the vault editions. Uh, super shiny foiling. Almost looks fake but that's just what they came like. Uh, legendary creature Rat Ninja. It's a 5-4. And uh, you can get it out there for its ninjutsu cost, which is a 3 and 2 black. And what that is, it says return an unblocked attack or you control to hand. Put this card on the battlefield from your hand tapped and attacking. So say like you have one of these cards on the battlefield. You have Typhoid Rats in the battlefield and you attack with it. Since it has Death Touch, maybe your opponent doesn't want to trade their bigger creature for a 1-1. One, one. So it's going to be unblocked. You pay the ninjutsu cost. You pretty much flash it on the battlefield in place of it getting the 5 damage in there. So very cool. And also, something happens when he deals combat damage. Whenever Ink Eyes Sermented Oni deals combat damage to a player, you may put target creature from a uh, card from uh, that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And you can also regenerate for one in a black. So pretty much, if you want to guarantee to get this off, play it for its ninjutsu cost, uh, swap it for in a place with an unblocking, unblocking attacker, deal the five damage to them, if you have to, you can also regenerate it. And then you take a creature card from your opponent's graveyard and put it on the battlefield under your control. So pretty much steal one of their creatures. Pretty powerful. Um, absolutely fun, especially when it gets in there. It can just be a whole a whole bunch of fun. But anyways, uh, this is just a fun little casual deck that I'm going to make and share with you all. I'm open to have any suggestions. If you have any of uh, ways that you think I can make it better, more efficient, I'm totally up for that. Anyways, I just want to say I hope you enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun to make these kind of videos and these kind of decks. I enjoy this game so much. And I just want to say, hope you're all doing safe. Hope you're all staying inside. And just stay positive. Keep on keeping on. And I'll catch you all in the next one.